This following video by Thaco Point will depict the technique of semi-secting an IOL. That is, the technique of cutting it down the middle and hitching it against the main incision and pulling the entire lens out of the eye. The main advantage, I think, of semi-secting an IOL is the fact that one, the number of cuts to go all the way from one end to the other into the IOL are less, so you're automatically reducing the intraocular manipulation of instruments. And secondly, since you don't actually break the IOL into different pieces, the need to go back in, hold, fixate and remove either two or three different pieces is no longer an issue because it's still one complete lens. I think that's why I feel it is one of the simplest techniques to perform. The only limitation of semi-section of the IOL is the fact that you're yanking it across a wound. There may be some amount of damage to the wound itself, so I would like to ensure that I enlarge my incisions from the conventional 2.8 to almost 3.2 to 3.4 to 3.6 millimeters to allow for the ease of removal of the IOL and to minimize the damage to the corneal main incision. Now, let's move to the surgery itself. This patient presented on day one post-operatively with a inferiorly decentered IOL. A UBM performed in the post-operative period showed the presence of a zonular dialysis between 6 and 9 o'clock position. That is 3 o'clock hours of zonular dialysis. Clearly, there was a posterior capsular rupture as well, which had been missed in this case. A surgical plan was made to explant this IOL and replace this IOL with a three-piece IOL in the sulcus. To start with, a new side port incision is created at that point, which will give the surgeon maximum and comfortable access to the intraoperative manipulations during the IOL explantation procedure. After insufflating the globe with viscoelastic, the surgeon then introduces an iris repositor on both sides and sweeps it around below the iris to look for the presence and the extent of the sulcus and to get a feel of the IOL itself prior to bringing it out into the anterior chamber prior to explanting it. Having done so, the surgeon then reintroduces some more viscoelastic into the anterior chamber and then proceeds to bringing the IOL into the anterior chamber. He either uses one or two instruments, hooks onto the optic haptic junction, and in an upward sweep, turn by turn, both the haptics are turned around, swept, and brought into the anterior chamber. The main 2.8 incision is suitably enlarged to allow for ease of explanting of the IOL. The IOL is now rotated such that both haptics come to lie on either side of the main incision. Whilst supporting the optic with the left hand and with a Sinsky hook, the surgeon then grabs hold of the optic with the help of an intraocular forceps. Having done so, the surgeon now introduces the scissors into the eye and starts to cut through the middle of the optic up to and just beyond its center. It is very important to maintain a very firm hold on the optic with the intraocular forceps held in the non-dominant hand throughout this process of sectioning the IOL. We now move to explanting the IOL out of the eye. One of the haptics is held. One of the haptics is held close to the optic haptic junction and is pulled out through the main incision. The optic is then re-grasped and a part of it is pulled out along the cut edge. The IOL itself works as a fulcrum which now rotates upon itself until the entire IOL is exteriorized in a manner demonstrated above in the video. This completes the semi-section of the IOL. Thank you.